Now I've wanted uh, an 80s boombox tape player for a while and I've been looking on eBay for the most 80s one I could find. And this is what I came up with. An hour, 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 hour. CS200, four band stereo radio cassette recorder. Oh yeah. Just look at the 80s-ness of this thing. Just the colors, the, the purples and the greens, the bright yellow, everything. Just, it just screams 80s. So this was sold as working um, radio, but not the cassette tape. So we'll check that out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this up because as you can see, it's pretty mucky. You see that it's pretty grimy. So we're gonna try and take it apart, clean it up. Some paint down the speaker grill there. Uh, so this, this cassette door doesn't look right. Opens, opens. It's a bit grubby in there. Oh, there you go, it does close. So we're gonna give it a good clean and try and get everything working. I've bought some new belts in case that needs replacing, which it probably will. But yeah, let's give it a go. Now I did notice something when I first picked it up is that if you can hear it, you hear that? Something is rattling. Now I wonder if that's to do with why, see this, this is loose. So I don't see in there, that bit is not doing anything. So I wonder whether that bit that's rattling is to do with that. But anyway, before we start taking it apart, let's just see if it works. So let's plug it in. We've got a noise. Right, so we've got some sort of, let's just plug, unplug the aerial and let's see if we can tune it into something. Then send help. Treasure quest. Don't even know what going here is. Okay, I'll just... Chris Milligan. It sounds all right. <laughs> ah. Well, e. here it is. So this. Yeah, look, you've done a great job today. Thank you so much. Okay. I really appreciate it. That's very kind of you. You are looking fabulous for Thank fabulous you. Friday. People won't know, but Anna, so that one's all right. But the volume is. Out. You see, Anna, what twelve years she probably is going out. Yeah. Right, let's go and get a tape. The radio seems okay. I'm wearing going out clothes. And the I'm FM stereo light. You know, happy days. Let's go and get a tape and see whether a tape plays. Okay. So we don't get a content strike on the music. We're gonna try this. Do you remember these? See, this is an old Smith C15 computer cassette with some um, fucked up games on it. We've got River Rescue for the Spectrum and Meteor Storm. But it will see if it will play. Let's try it. So let's put it onto tape. Get rid of this. Inject it. So I'm guessing I put it in. Uh, press play. 
Okay, it's not playing. Now I don't. I think that's because it's not sitting in properly. So if I push it in by hand like that, now press play. Oh, it's working. Let's rewind to the. No, oh, we can rewind. Let's just rewind to the start, just so that we can hear the first load. See what that sounds like. Do I imagine it? It's the belt. I can't imagine is uh, it's going to be all that. Oh, can you hear that? <laughs> That's a beautiful sound, isn't it? Now, bearing in mind, this tape's best part of 40 years old as well, so... But, okay. And, of course, I can't eject it like that, so we just need to pull it out. That's fine. Right, so the tape player works. It's just this door that seems broken. So, I think what we need to do is take it apart. Give it a clean up and see what's what. So this is the back of the unit. So let's just have a look at the uh, battery compartment. Um, and as you can see, it's it's pretty disgusting in there. And there's here we're missing part of the spring, but which I can sort out another time. But I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, it's it's pretty disgusting. It's pretty grim. You can see if I hold up to the camera, can you see all that grime and muck in there? It all needs a bit of a clean and actually I don't. Yeah, I think that snaps, doesn't it? So there's the model CS200K. Apparently. So let's take it apart anyway and uh, grab a beer. Quick slap. <coughs> right. Let's take it apart and uh, see where we're at. One eternity later. So yeah, so this is the inside. And it was a world of pain to get open. So the front basically had to come off. So these screws, the screws did not want to leave. Even with magnetized screwdriver, they did not want to leave this final bit. Um, but I saw somebody else take open a similar model and the front had to come off so I managed to prise that off without breaking anything. What I'm looking for now is that that rattly bit and I think I found it I think that's it down there let's just see if I can yeah that's it Grab that out of that. So this must be the parts of the tape deck. So this is the tape. This is the other side of the tape deck. So this is one side of it, and this is the other side. I reckon this must go in here somewhere. You can figure that out. I don't know. It all needs a massive clean. Right, so I, th I think this 
it's just held on by these two screws this one and this one because these two this one and possibly this one I don't want to upset stuff too much this looks like it I'll go back this looks like it oh, it slots in there doesn't it Oh god, how'd you get that? So that has to go up like that and slot back into the little slot. Okay. Right, so there's this bit here, which is the end of this. But it's it's tensioned down here and onto here. So if I unscrew this, that might be enough just to Just to do it, let's give it a go. Let's unscrew it. So I need to get this, I think I need to get this tape mechanism out so I can change the belt. Oh, this is tight. Built, to be honest. Okay. Let's see, now that's... Lifted that. I wonder if I lift that like that. I can carefully move that out of the way. Let's try and get this out now. Okay, that comes out to a point. Yeah, this this is the belt here. It's really like it's got nothing in it. So let's get that off. Let me just get that off. I'll come back. So belt. This metal plate had to come off, held together by one little screw. This little bastard, which is pretty much. I don't know if you can see that. It's really freaking annoying. My camera's not, but it's pretty much rounded off. So I had to use a pair of pliers to get it out. I don't know how I'm going to get it back in. But that is bollocks. So here's me slightly thicker one. And then here's the one I've got that's kind of closest to it, I think. I think this is going to be the one I'm going to try. So it comes up a little bit smaller, but it's not quite so saggy. So it's lovely and lovely and tight. So let's try and get that on and then see where we're at. All right, so that's my new, my new belt in. And that feels pretty good. Kind of happy with that. So now I've got to try and get that bloody screw back in somehow. And then we're going to start giving it a clean up. Yay. Right, let's try getting this tape mechanism back in and then the FM thingy as well. Okay, finally got this bit on. That was a bitch. Jesus Christ. But this is now like properly firm. So this bit, I've, when I put it back together, 
I've got a line up in there. I'm hoping that's relatively easy, but we'll see. Right, next we're going to try and work out what's going on with this. So, God, I thought I'd clean this and it looks disgusting. So let's give that a bit more of a wipe up and then we'll figure out what we're doing here. Yay. So it's voice over me now uh, as the rest of the family arrived and uh, made more noise than than you'd want in this video. So here I am. I've just discovered what this bit does. So it plugs into that little hole there, which is brilliant. So that's where it had fallen out from. And with the spring attached, it shouldn't ping out of that little hole. So you just need to line it up. And then that lines up and closes nicely. And stops it going all awkward at the top of the, uh, the tape deck, which is good news. So really happy with that. So now onto the little white paint mark that we've got on the right hand speaker. And this was just a case of it getting a wet wipe and a screwdriver and just trying to poke in the holes and trying to get it off, which was all time consuming. But it uh, wasn't too bad in the end. I managed to get rid of some of the nastier bits that were stuck inside the speaker as well with the same method. And then a toothbrush to scrape over it and then a bit of contact cleaner everywhere good old contact cleaner to get rid of those um hisses and nasty sounds so everything gets good clean and then onto these so these were absolutely knackered so there's two screws, one on each side, that hold the door in place. So they're on a kind of plastic surround. So because they were so brittle and knackered, what I had to do was glue them in. So I super glued the metal plate to the plastic rim and then kept moving this tape mechanism to make sure it didn't stick. Um, and this was the end result with the spring in. So the tape mechanism now works fully. Look at that, it's even much slower opening and closing than it was before. Partly down to the super glue, I think, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with that because uh, that wasn't repairable by any other means. So yeah, with it all back together, it opens and closes really nicely. Really was impressed with that. And in terms of putting it back together, it was pretty straightforward. Um, it just basically slotted onto the top and just needed a little screwdriver to hold that FM bit in place. And then the final job was just to give it a really good clean up the top where it was mostly dirty. So it gave all the buttons a really good clean. I tried first just with a wet wipe trying to get in there but this proved to be very time consuming, as you can see here. It took forever to get that, to get that in. But a bit of elbow grease, holding the buttons and about 50 wet wipes. We did manage to get those buttons looking much better. Ideally, I wanted to take them off and give them a good scrub but this was a slightly easier option. And then just the tip of a screwdriver just to get rid of any paint flecks. This has definitely uh, been the radio of some decorating, that's for sure. But uh, nothing too bad. Nothing not too manageable. So that was pretty much the buttons done with a wet wipe. And then just to finish off the buttons, I moved on to an old toothbrush. And I only put a little bit of uh, fairy liquid on it just to give it a bit of a scrub. But um, yeah, it went a bit more foamy than I'd hoped. 
but there's nothing really around the buttons. The buttons are kind of clear of anything else anyway, so I wasn't too worried and it wasn't too wet, it was just foamy. And then onto the back, where I got rid of all that grimy stuff within the uh, battery compartment. I'm gonna keep this plugged in most of the time, so I'm not too worried about the battery compartment at the moment. But uh, it was pretty yucky in there, so we gave that a good clean as well. So they all looked very nice. Lovely jubbly. So here it is, where it's going to live, in my office, next to my little Sony Trinitron and my Dreamcast. I think it looks quite nice here. Looking very clean. All the yellow came up well. Speaker grills came up well. Got rid of most of the grime in it, and that was painful. And the top's got a few little scratches and scrapes, which I might sharpie over, but you, like, you can see there, and some paint chips missing, but it's much cleaner than it was when I first got it. So tape player, the test, creaks a little bit, but it opens. Um, the only music I've got is a Billie Eilish album, so I can only play a small part of that before I get a contact uh, content match. I always say contact, I don't know why. So let's play that and I'll show you the volume and, uh, and then I'll stop it quick. So no cracks or hissles. Cracks or hissles? Cracks or hisses? Love when it comes without a warning Cause waiting for it gets so boring Sounds good! Can't play too much I'm afraid of that But there you get the idea And the uh, tone as well No noise Beautiful So there we go Result so thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.